Today is the final sermon in our stewardship series, and we are going to be covering a few passages from the book of Exodus. In fact, these passages come from the glossed over chapters. Exodus 35 through 40 is seen as something that most people don't really read. You just go right past it. Because they describe building the tabernacle in those chapters. Uh, You see different measurements and different angles. And the thing is, they described building the tabernacle once before in chapter 25 through 31. They described how to build it, and then they described building it once again. In fact, the NIV study Bible that I use has little notes underneath each chapter. And if you look at chapter 25, you'll find that half of the page is just notes about this one chapter. There's not a single note between chapter 35 and 40. Even the scholars gloss over it. But there's something important in there, particularly in the ask that Moses gives the community and the response they give him. So we're going to start with the first section of our reading today, Exodus chapter 35, verses 4 through 9. Moses said to the whole Israelite community, This is what the Lord has commanded. For what you have, from what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze, purple and blue and scarlet yarn and fine linen, goat hair and ram skins dyed red, and any other type of durable leather, acai wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oils, and for the fragrant incense, and ox stone and other gems to be mounted on the ebony and breastplates. The word of the Lord. I'm glad you all don't bring some of those items with you to church. I don't know how much we're going to need a ram skin here. But there's one very interesting word here. It comes up in the fifth verse, and it says, everyone who is willing. But the word willing is not willing in the Hebrew. In fact, it's two separate, distinct words. Uh, The first word being nadib, which is translated to be a free will. So who has signed a document recently, right? A few people. Uh, It says there under there, you are signing this of your own free will and accord. No one's holding a gun to you, making you sign this piece of paper. That's what this word means, the, the first section. The second one is a short word, leb, and it means heart. But it means more than just heart. Sometimes it's translated as inner man, your inner man. It's your soul, your essence, your being. This word isn't willing. It is everyone with a free and open heart is to give. And that's powerful, right? A free and open heart. Now, the tabernacle was the temple before there was the temple. When the Israelite community was traveling in the desert, they built this tabernacle to worship the Lord. Now, really, it was just a very large tent. It was a tent with the Ark of the Covenant inside. It was a temporary structure. It was not a permanent structure. But it was still the very first building project that this community had come together to build since they had left Egypt. This was their first building project as a community and not a building project for Pharaoh. So what do you think the response of this community was to building this temporary structure? Well, we see that response in Exodus chapter 36, verse 1 through 7. 
So Bezalel and Oholiam and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the works of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord had commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezael and Oholiam and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was able and willing to come to do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord has commanded to be done. Then Moses gave the order and sent out this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because, they, because what they had already done was more than enough to do all the work. The word of the Lord. It's interesting, right? Moses had to say, please stop bringing offerings. Your heart was too open. But that speaks to this project, how it was able to build the community up and, and get everyone to come together and give whatever they had. This community had been wandering in the desert. They were not a wealthy community. What they were giving was, in many cases, possibly all that they had. But still, they gave it to this temporary structure to worship the Lord. Now, I've mentioned multiple times that the tabernacle was temporary. It was not a permanent fixture. And that's true, but this temporary structure lasted 440 years. 440 years, this tent was the worshiping house of the Lord for the Israeli community. The oldest church in the continental United States is a little over 400 years old. That tabernacle stood longer than the oldest church here in the United States. But even more surprising, the two temples, the permanent structures to worship the Lord, well, the first one stood roughly 400 years. Solomon's temple was around for 400 years before it was destroyed. And the second temple, 420 years. The tabernacle, the temporary place of worship, stood longer than the permanent ones. And I think that speaks volumes to the nature of God. Because I compare our church more to the tabernacle than I would the temple. It is a movable structure that is made possible because of the people here inside. Now, today is our, our, our final day in our stewardship campaign. A day that we can think about all of the things that we are thankful for and the blessings we can give to others. And we have those little cards that you had mailed out to you. If you didn't have one mailed to you, there are some still in the back. And we ask that when you fill that card out, you don't think about what's just going to happen today. But think about the future. I, I see those Israelites, those first Hebrews, bringing those gifts. And I have to imagine not only the blessing they received from that, but the generations of people who were able to look up at that ram skin, that durable leather, those other precious stones, and find it to be the house of the Lord because of their blessings. The gifts you give today don't just impact us here, right now, but they impact generations of Christians who come to this house of worship for years to come. So, as we 
prayerfully end our stewardship campaign and come in to celebrate Advent, I ask that you remember not only what God has done for you, but what it is that we can give to the Lord. How can we approach giving with a free and open heart? Now, church, will you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you. Thank you for everything that you have given us. And we know that this structure here is nothing more than a temporary structure, a temporary house for your worship, because the true house of you rests above. And Lord, we thank you for that, but we also want to make sure that this house here is a good one that it's strong, and that it's built here on this corner to service the community. And we ask that you come into our hearts and open them up so that we can build up your kingdom here and truly make it a beacon of light to the world. Amen.